All right, day 14. We are making progress now. Uh, we got the truck pushed up on the lift. Actually, I had my dad and brother help me out. Uh, with all the wheel bearings, everything's real tight. It was tough pushing this thing on the lift. It was, it was fighting us getting up on those ramps. So, But it's up here. Everything's good to go. Everything sits level. Uh, the front is within a 16th side to side, which is great. Uh, I do need to fiddle with the spring on the driver's side, or the passenger side. Uh, the ride tech comes with a hat that goes on top of the spring and it fits up inside the pocket uh, that indexes off of a, a rivet and it shifted slightly when I put it in there. So I'm going to get it back on the ground and uh, uh, I'll have to just fiddle with that a little bit, push that over. Um, so everything on the front's good. The rear, um, which has been on the ground before, uh, sits pretty good. The passenger side here is a little high. Or, yeah, the passenger side that is. Uh, and I'm thinking it is because... The frame's a little bit tweaked, and the way this shot goes in compared to the driver's side, it sits out a little bit further, or well, I should say in, out away from the uh, uh, the trailing arm. So it kind of binds just ever so slightly. Um, shock works everything right, but it's just it's just a, it's a little stiffer on that side. So I think it's just it's holding it up just a little bit, and that frame being tweaked, it's holding it up just ever so slightly. But I can't complain. The trucks, you know, a '72, so. The front's a 16th out and the back's 3 sixteenths. I'm, I'm not going to complain about that. So, uh, One thing I did notice, uh, this transmission is sitting in here cockeyed. The whole, actually, the whole drive line is in here cockeyed. And I, I, I wondered what had happened. Um, this truck's kind of a, a bit of a mutt. It started off life as a, uh, a manual truck, and then somebody's converted it to an automatic. So it's got... Uh, the transmission cross member here is actually, it appears that it's the right cross member, just missing the uh, the ears that go up to the top, which, you know, no big deal. Um, but anyway, I put the jack underneath the transmission to try to jack up and see what's going on here, and this transmission mount is completely split. So that would be why that transmission's sitting in there cockeyed. This has been like this since I've owned it, and I've never, I, I, I fiddled with it, but never in a million years did I think it would be broken like that. So it just shifted over. So I'm going to buy a new mount. Uh, I'll put that in there so that'll clear that up. I'm going to put a new seal in the back of that while I'm down here because it's seeping pretty good. But uh, it's kind of where it's at. So tonight I am going to work on getting the stock brake lines removed from the truck and start laying out the new uh, inline tube stainless lines and kind of you know, seeing uh, how it fits and what needs to be tweaked. I know that the front is fine. Um, from the frame up to the master is going to be a little bit different since I'm not running the stock master. I'm going to have a, a, a Willwood uh, master on there. So we're going to figure that out. And the rear, I think I discussed this earlier in, uh, in an earlier video, but the, on 72, the brake lines, turn that light off there. The brake lines go all the way back here to this cross member behind the axle here. And I'm thinking what I might do, and I've seen some guys do this before, is there is a, a union that sits right here. So I'm thinking maybe just 90 in that thing, coming out this hole right here and then over to the axle. So yeah, we'll see when we get the parts laid out, but that's kind of where it's at right now. So uh, it's just nice to get it up in the air and on four wheels here. So um, anyway, that's it for right now. Well, that was pretty easy. The uh, All the brake lines and everything came out really well. I ended up just cutting the brake lines. Um, no big deal. The, the only snag I caught was uh, the clevis pin on the back of the booster was uh, pretty stuck in there, but I got it out no problem. Uh, so all the parts are down, out of the car, or the truck I should say. Uh, next plan of action is to clean up some of this grease and grime. Uh, this motor has leaked a little oil over the years. Uh, I've tried to seal it up as best I can, but it still leaks a little here and there. I've actually got a new motor, which is tucked away back there. It's going to go on the truck here uh, pretty quick. A uh, little hint, it's going to be a more modern motor. So uh, that's kind of what we're doing right now. Just kind of clean up all the frame rails, clean all the grease and grime as best we can. Uh, this is going to get a thorough cleaning when that motor gets pulled out. So I'm going to clean this cross member and uh, frame rails, everything up there. Get it all cleaned out. So I'm actually waiting on, I bought a uh, Tough Stuff, Tough Stuff replacement uh, booster because I don't know this one. I don't know this history. I don't know if it's leaking or whatnot. So just went ahead and bought one of them. They're made in the U.S., high quality, highly recommended. So also got a, uh, a uh, I can't talk tonight, a Willwood uh, 
master cylinder with uh, adjustable portioning, proportioning valve. I'm a little tongue tied tonight, but uh, so that'll help with the uh, setting up the rear disc. So, but that's kind of where we're going right now. I am going to get out the brake cleaner and the degreaser and start cleaning some of this grease and grime up and start putting these new lines in here. So literally 15 minutes later, the brake line kit is installed. Uh, nothing's hooked up. I don't have any, uh, any unions or I don't get the T there. So I'm going to actually take the ones that came off the truck and see if I can't get them apart, uh, clean them up. But uh, I can't say enough about this uh, inline tube kit. Uh, I know their customer service is not the best, but this kit fits perfect. Uh, I, was, uh, I was afraid I was going to have to do some bending and reshaping, but there is nothing that's going to have to be done here. So I've got the lines. Uh, this one's actually kind of laying over, but uh, this one comes up and it goes just about where it needs to go. Um, I got the lines kind of mocked up, the, the braid lines mocked up. Um, uh, on the rear, as I suspected, the line stops here. So my thinking is, and I'm not 100% sure, is the earlier trucks, the line for the rear uh, brakes came out here. In the later trucks, it came out in this cross member behind the pumpkin here. But my thought is I could go buy a piece of uh, preformed nickel copper, uh, probably 10 inches long, and make this turn and do that. And then I am going to run my stainless line with plenty of slack to the pumpkin like that. Now for the rear brakes, I talked about this, get back here, I talked about this uh, in one of the earlier videos. These are obviously for uh, drum brakes. So the line's well, probably six inches too long. So my initial reaction was to go ahead and maybe see if we can't cut those and reflare those. But I'm honestly thinking about doing the same thing back here, just going to buy a set of preformed lines that are, uh, I don't know, I haven't measured them yet, but uh, this side's a little longer than that side, but just some preformed lines and just make my own lines for back here. Um, don't know yet, don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, well, let's kind of see how that shakes out here. But as for today, I made a ton of progress. Um, really easy. This is probably the easiest part of the whole truck. So, or the whole project anyway. So, I am going to get those T's and those unions. Um, one thing I was thinking about doing was this line set, these sets of lines that run across here. This truck right now has a set of headers on it that come down and get really close right here and to all of this right here. So, I was thinking about kind of like what I've done here is put some of this DEI heat wrap on those lines, um, which you need to do before you put the, uh, the lines uh, in for good for you. So you don't want to break the seal again. So I need to go digging around. I know I have some somewhere. I don't know how much I have. So I'm thinking about wrapping those lines just to keep the heat out of them. So I know that uh, beforehand when I'd run down the highway for a while, I'd go down to a car show. It's about 45 minutes south of here. The brakes would get, Pretty spongy, and I guarantee you that brake fluid was boiling. So uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, <clears throat> kind of just a, a precautionary thing. So, uh, but anyway, that's uh, about it for tonight. Uh, it was kind of a, a short video tonight, not a whole lot of action, but I just kind of want to show what I was working on here and how it was all going to kind of go together and just going to modify it a little bit. Um, uh, that's all I have. Oh, I forgot the inline tube kit when you buy this I don't know if this was an accident or if this was uh, for real, but the uh, Kit comes with both the long bed and the short bed tubing So I actually have this line here that runs to the back the long bed version of it So I actually actually have some extra lines. So that might be coming handy with something to do with this rear end, but uh, um that's it for today. So I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, like always, if you have any questions or comments or concerns or anything I'm doing stupid or making myself look like an idiot, please let me know. Uh, sound like a panhandler again, but uh, if you'd like to, please like and subscribe. Uh, at this point, it's not really helping out uh, monetarily or anything like that. So I'm just kind of doing this uh, for fun and to spread the, uh, the information here. I kind of give back to the community. So. Um, anyway, that's all I have for today. Appreciate you guys watching. Thank you.